Welcome to Tumapta. I'm your host, Marjorie Bates. Ako na Inuit. Tumapta mo takun na ako. I see ubang Robert Kaptana. On today's program, we're here in Inuvik at the 15th annual Great Northern Arts Festival. Tayo ko ako Great Northern Arts Festival. Hundred awat kondo ka tayo tama ng kaing mata Inuvik mo. Sulip tayo ako tayo tayo man na kanok tuh sa bawang ng takun na ako ching mata Mary Trimble tayo ako tayo tama na. So now we are going to see. On today's program, we'll visit with the Inubalawit artist that now resides in Nanaimo, BC, Mary Trimble. My Eskimo name is Oyagaya. Uh, I live. I used to live here, but we live in Nanaimo, BC, on the island now, and that's where we make our place. Uh, place now. Mm -hmm. I was born on September third, nineteen thirty-seven and a demarcation point right on the Alaska border, yeah. Could you tell me a little bit about demarcation and where you grew up around the coastline? Yeah, I, I guess demarcation used to be a little small settlement there years ago. Uh, it's not now, it's nothing there now, but there was a little settlement that my mom and dad bought. That's where I was born, I guess, yeah. I didn't know the place because we went away from there quite a while after that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about your parents, their names, mm -hmm. and where you used to travel besides mm -hmm. the demarcation. Yeah, yeah, my mother, my dad is James Coven, and my mother is Irene, and we lived, from, we moved from demarcation, but just around the coastline. We went to Herschel Island, Termican Bay, and different areas. We lived along the coast for many years when we got into Canada, yeah, before we got into Canada. And my dad drove us with his dog team and then brought us into, yeah. Could you tell me a little bit about your childhood memories growing yeah. up along, yeah. along the coast? Yeah, we used to have fun. We didn't have much to play with, but we used to play out quite a bit when we were a child. I had an older brother that my mother from my first husband, and he used to be with us, and he used to give us things to do every day, sliding down the hill, and this and that, yeah. Could you tell me a little bit about your childhood, your brothers, your sisters, and tell me a little bit more about your parents? My, I have a brother named Jacob, and I have a, uh, I used to have quite a few sisters, but they now all pass on now. So my sister Elizabeth, she lives in Alaska now, and Elsie lives in Aklavik. Jacob, my older brother, lives in Aklavik, and then Clarence lives in Aklavik, and, and other brothers live there. Yeah, my oldest son, Ayak, carved. After he finished school, he started carving, and then he's been at it even now. He's, that's how he makes his living. Yeah, and we learn a lot from him. My dad used to do all this making spoons for, that because we didn't have any spoons, sometimes he make us a coyote box and uh, we used to do quite a bit of that. And, and then I really love to, to keep it going in mm -hmm. our family. I have an older son, uh, his name, Eskimo name is Ayak and his name is Fred. And next to her we have Carol, she's now pass on. And then we have Jimmy and Loretta now, yeah. And I have ten grandchildren. <laughs> Your piece called the Arctic Char Spawning that you have on display here, what inspired you to do the Arctic Char Spawning? The Arctic Char carving was uh, one week bring it into the house or outside, stand it up, and for days we would look at it, see what we could make with this stone. And so, sometimes we draw, draw, I draw in the paper, and see maybe this, is, this piece might go into the stone. And when, the, uh, when you, okay, maybe this stone would come into two fish, maybe I could make two. And then so you start carving this, chisel at it, and work on it, and then, and, and it takes a little while. You don't do carving 
uh, too long, you let it sit for a few days, and when you're ready to do it again, you can do work on it. It takes time to finish a carving, yeah. But it's fun when you, when it's time to put it in the oven, you know, and then you put it in the oven, heat it up, put your wax on and have to wait. When it's done, it really gives you a joy to see this carving out of a stone, mm. yeah. yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about why you put the carvings in the oven? And yeah, well, you have to put the carvings in the oven to heat, heat them up, to put wax on them. When they're hot, you put your hot wax on them with a the cloth, and f when they get quite hot, you take them out in the oven, you put all your wax in it, you know, with a cloth, mm -hmm. and then after you do that, you can let it sit cool down. When it's cooled down enough, you can buff it with a cloth, a uh, flannel, and then, and then that's, that's done. And you say, "Oh, I've done this now. <laughs> yeah. It's good. It's good feeling." Yeah. yeah. Well, it just came. You know, if you have a big stone there, and you could, you don't, you hate to cut out a whole big bunch of pieces, and then you, you try and use it, the stone because it's really hard to get stones where we are. We have to have it you know, shipped in from somewhere else. Yeah. We had a big, big round stone that we got from a shipment that we, we ordered. And when it came, we put it on the same thing as you watching it, see what we could make. And and then that's what we finished with that walrus, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've, I've noticed you have a lot of dolls here at the Arts Festival this year, and also some of your um, stained glass that uh -huh. you have here. And what inspired yeah. you to make yeah. the dolls? Yeah, well, my mother used to make dolls for us when we were really little. And I, and I used to sew for my family, feet to, from head to toe. And I thought, I don't make them anymore because you don't, where we are, we don't use parkers anymore. So I thought I'll make it into little miniature dolls, Inuvalut dolls. And so that's, I've been doing them for quite a few years. And yeah, that gave me pleasure to do sewing, yeah, because I sewed all my life. And my mother taught me when I was a little girl to start sewing, uh, help me cut out and the pieces. I sewed ever since I was just a little girl. See, as long as I, you know, as soon as I could use a needle and a thimble. And then I sewed. I've been doing that. My, my mother taught me a whole lot to dress my family. She's told me, if you ever get married, you'll have to learn how to dress your husband because he travels a lot and the kids need clothing here. Yeah. Mapto will be right back as we speak more with Mary Trimble about some of our carvings here at the Arts Festival. Great Northern Art Festival. Welcome back to Tamakta. As we speak more with Mary Trimble about some of her creations that is featured here at the Arts Festival. Mary Trimble, Could you tell me a little bit about the stained glass and where you learned to do the stained glass? We have a hobby in Nanaimo that do quite a few crafts. And then we there every, just about a whole week, we have something going different in there. And so I thought I'll do stay. I watched the ladies there doing stained glass, and I thought I would learn. So, and I've been at it for a little while too. So that's where I learned my stained glass, yes. The Arts Festival brings up many artists this year. Mm -hmm. Have you? taught or learn something from a different artist? That yes, when, yeah. when you come here, you see a lot of lots of different things and then it really helps you down the road what you can do and then you just yeah. watch and watch some work and, and then 
that really helps you to learn more. As you come here, you learn more to do things here. This is your first year to the Arts Festival. Uh, I've been here quite a few times before this year, and then we haven't been here for a few years, and this year we were invited, so we are here with our carvings. I know it took a long journey for you to come up here. Yeah. Did you yeah. travel on your own, and how did you get your, yeah. your work yeah. up here? We loaded our van. We have a van that, where that we use. We used to transport our art different places, and so we got that van going and loaded up and traveled all these roads and come here, yeah. So this you was drove from D.C. through the Dempster? Yeah, through the Dempster. Now Dempster's you're in the Nuvik and yes, you're uh, displaying your work here. Yeah. Do you think it's it's a worthwhile trip to come up to a yeah, from it's really, Yeah, it's really, really worthwhile to get to, to show your art, you know, what you can do to, to show what you can make. And yeah, it's really, really nice to come here and do your work, yes. You know, some of the organizers I was speaking to yesterday um, were in total awe over mm -hmm. your work and mm -hmm. they couldn't stop talking about your work. Mm -hmm. And they also told me that you were the top seller at the Arts Festival. How mm -hmm. does that make you feel mm -hmm. coming back up to Nubik after yeah. a couple of years? Yeah, it, that really, really mm -hmm. encouraged me, inspired me more to do more. And then if somebody says something nice about my carving, and that really fills you up, and so you want to do more. And it's, I'm really thankful that they like my art here, you know. If a child came up to you and said, Mary, I want to learn how to carve, how mm -hmm. do I start, and what advice would you give to that child? Mm -hmm. I would advise them, you took, a, you took a piece of stone, you start off with a small piece, and you can file it, do this with it, and maybe file it here and then you make something with it. You might, first thing you might make a bear because the bear is very easy to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. If I see that he finished this carving and I would say, oh, you done this piece, it's your first one. Your next one will be, will be improved. Your third one will improve and then so on and so on and so on. And they would, I would really encourage them to do something because you have hands to work with, and then they, you know, yeah. Could you tell me a little bit about Lyle's input into some of your carvings and mm. what he helps you yeah. in doing? Yeah, Lyle helps me with pack up the big rocks, and then he helps me. We, I guess we could make big, this stone here, we could make, you could make something with it, and then so we draw papers colorings and different things like that and, and he helps me a lot I'm thankful for that yes when I guess when he was a teenager he used to paint he did a little bit in high school and then I guess he got busy with life down the road and he just didn't paint anymore but when we went to BC uh, he started he thought he could do painting and he started it and he that's what they make his living now, painting, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. How did you meet Lyle? We, when I was living in a clavic, uh, when I was a teenager in a clavic, he, he came by a boat with the RCMP, and he lived in, in a clavic for quite a few years, and then he was shipped to our, uh, McPherson. And when he came, when he finished with the RCMP, he went back to a clavic, and then we met there, and. Mm, we <laughs> How many years have you both been married? I've been married, we've been married 43 years. It'd be 44 in April. <laughs> <laughs> This year's theme is Spirit of the Masters, Past, Present, and Future. Uh, we wanted to we wanted to do several things. We wanted to honor uh, the masters who have gone before, some of those who have passed away. And uh, you may have noticed that the artist who's on the poster, Stanley Klingenberg, is an artist who has passed. So we wanted to send some recognition that way. And to the artists, especially the elders who are working today, 
who have had such a long influence for so many years on so many generations. So we wanted to honor that group. Then we wanted to make sure that we recognized the current masters, uh, the contemporary artists uh, who are in the middle of their careers, who still have uh, years of work ahead of them, but also have an entire body of work behind them, like the Nezagalowacks and the Taylors. Those, those level of artists. And then we, wanted to, so we also wanted to make sure that we honored the younger artists, the next generation, who are just at the beginning of their careers, who now have the opportunity to look at the work of the contemporary artists and the elders, and who have a, a whole lifetime of artwork ahead of them. And it, we wanted to make people think about and wonder what sort of work they will see in years to come from these these artists, boys and girls, men and women who are only in their teens or their 20s right now. When we, we first learned about uh, Mary, her daughter had come into our office and had wanted to know if there's any way that we could bring Mary up. And of course, we're a small nonprofit society and almost all of our funding is dedicated towards uh, artists who actually reside in Yukon, NWT, or Nunavut. We have very little money that can go towards bringing artists from these other regions. So what we had to say was, you know, we'd be very happy to have Mary up. We knew very little about her. There's not a lot of documentation on her work. Um, and I believe her daughter got in touch with uh, Mary and Lyle, and they came up really footing their own bill. And since her arrival, she's actually been the top seller this year with these very creative and beautiful works. Well, beside the carving, I think what I'd want to say most about Mary is just the... Uh, the level that she's willing to participate in everything. We have participants come up who are sometimes very shy and just very quiet by nature, and maybe they'll, they don't get as much out of the festival as we have to offer. But Mary, from day one, she has been uh, set up up at the tables at the end of the, the table row here. She's been talking and meeting with other artists. And sure, some of them are artists that she knows from the past, but she's been making those contacts with new artists and younger artists. And when we think of the festival, um, sometimes people get caught up in the gallery sales and how well we're doing dollar-wise, but really the festival, is a, it's about exactly that. It's about two artists who may not ever have had a chance to sit down. They have an opportunity to share techniques and share stories and share contacts, and Mary just fits that bill absolutely perfectly. Thank you so much, Mary. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this time here with you. Nan 
in the middle of the afternoon at the King in the Richardson Mountains. Salva time and it make Takuyumi Naktok, Pinnaktok. Who lived down to tell the top what Inuit, Tamna, Nakiming Nut, Taimatin, Tibigibagat. Who lived down to Taimatin, Kubia Hook Factor, Puka River Festival. Open that warang at Elvania Clubbing Bay. Pio Yakotik, Pilguti Lakotik, Kayamit Kilakotik, Atok to Yakotik, Atulguti Lakotik, and what I might make in a way to Milaka Upakpagat. Pulip down the time, Martin Kilaluang Naramik, Akhang Naramik, Little Batap, what a clubbing mute. Talunga, Tapamunga, what to Shingle Point? Angonia reactor hooded, Kovia who reactor hooded look, Salvatamakwat, Angonia Ramik Telvatai Matur, Akrebakut, Kovia who hooded, Angoyetic, Kuya Blugit, Philip Tarlo, Ino Hectic Telvatai Martin, Kovia Blugo, Aklaving Mute. Thank you for watching Smakta. As we spoke with Mary about some of her creations, I'm your host, Marjorie Bates. We're going to talk to you about the name of the Kunakta Rapsi. We're going to talk to you Mary Trimble. We're going to talk to you about the Kunakta Rapsi. We're going to talk to you about the Kunakta Rapsi. We're going to talk to you about the Kunakta Rapsi. We're going to talk to you about the Kunakta Rapsi. We're going to talk to you about the Join us next week as we go out to Sac Harbor Northwest Territories and visit with a well respected elder, Geddes Wilkie. Paksaning ulo tak takon nasak kasi sa yub tak tama kung nasak gedes walk ka kulay ako na aming matao na kuya ko inonyalusin.